Rhema. You live by the Rhema of God. When you get that Rhema and you go out to work, it doesn't matter what you meet at work. You are a victor. Because you have Rhema on the inside. There will not be enough surprises to change your power. There will not be enough surprises to make you fall or bow or cower. You remain standing, come what may, because you have rhema on the inside. But weakness will be there when you have only logos. Five chapters of logos this morning, great. Then go to work and meet surprises, you fall. In spite of the fact that you studied a lot of scriptures today. But one little rhema. <laughs> Hallelujah. That's what your spirit lives by. Can you see why we have many Christians who are reading the Bible a lot, but very weak spiritually? They have not understood the difference between Rhema and Logos. They wonder why we are excited the way we are. They wonder why we are the way we are. They can't find those things you say. They've been reading the same stuff. Because Rhema is the personal word. See, remember this. God wants to lead every one of us personally. He wants to deal with us personally. He doesn't want us going for prayers from somebody. As long as we are babes growing up, yes. But he wants us, and that's the reason for giving us pastors and teachers and so on and so forth, so that we can be brought up. If today you're still needing counseling for the same things you needed counseling for two years ago, something's wrong. So every child of God needs to have the personal word. Without that personal word, The guidance of the Holy Spirit will not be evidence in your life. Are you following me? It will just not be there. Sometimes when we talk about, well, God has spoken to me, there are Christians who wonder, how can he say God spoke to him? Have you ever heard those folks? Some, even, even preachers, some of them say, this is what I don't like. Nobody should say God spoke to him. I heard somebody teach one time, he said, um, do not say God spoke to you. He said, at the most, say the word of the Lord came to me. You know what I thought? That guy never heard God talk to him. Well, <laughs> you, you believe God talked to Moses. Can you see that? The same fellow holds a Bible that tells him God talked to Moses. He believes God talked to Moses. Did God talk to David? Yes. Did he talk to John the Baptist? Not quite sure, but I think so. <laughs> Why? Because now we're getting closer into the New Testament now. But the Bible says John the Baptist was a prophet. It means God, God talked to him. Well, I don't know what somebody thinks about it. God talks to me. He does talk to me. He does. I'm one of his kids. He does talk to me. If I should say that I didn't know that God talked to me, I'll be lying. I'll be lying to you. He's talked to me several times. I'll be lying if I said I didn't know he talked to me. 
If you don't believe God can talk to somebody, that's your business. You know, we, we, we can't change that for you. <laughs> we can't make him talk to you now. It's your business. You can go in the dark then. God talks to me. And I'm glad he does. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Somebody say hallelujah. hallelujah. Praise God. Hallelujah. Yeah, move to the next one. Hello. I said, let's move to the next level. You ready? Okay. Now, the Bible tells us in John chapter 6, verse 63, I read that to you yesterday. You can look at it. Jesus said, it is the spirit that quickeneth. It is the spirit that giveth life. The spirit makes alive. He said, the flesh profited nothing. The spirit gives life. The flesh profited nothing. Then he said, the words, the rhema that I speak unto you, the rhema that I speak unto you, they are spirit. Hmm. You know, words are things. Words, words, words have spiritual tangibility. Words are things. Words are vehicles. Do you understand? Words are vehicles. And they are vessels. So you might describe them as vehicular vessels. Words carry power. Words carry a message. Now Jesus said, the words that I speak unto you. Am I right? Thank you. You're a wonderful guy. Thank you. God bless you. Praise the Lord. Amen. Jesus said, the words, the rhema that I speak unto you, they are spirits and they are life. They are spirits. It says, the rhema that I speak are spirit. He's talking about the anointing on the word. He's letting us know that the words that he speaks are not empty words. But then he said something that's remarkable. He said, the rhema that I speak to you, that's what makes it rhema. It is directed to you. If they were spoken out to anybody and everybody as a general message, that would be logos. But then he said, the rhema that I speak to you, he says, they are spirits. They are spirits. They are spirits. All right. Now keep that in your mind and turn quickly to 2 Corinthians chapter number 4. 2 Corinthians chapter number 4. Hallelujah. Wow, I like this one. Something is about to come out of this. 2 Corinthians chapter 4. Have you seen it? From verse 13. 
He says, we having the same spirit of faith. According as it is written, I believe <laughs> and therefore have I spoken. This is Rima. Did you catch it? Come. We having the same spirit of faith. According as it is written. He's telling you how the spirit of faith came. The spirit of faith is the working of Rhema. He says the principle of the spirit of faith is according as it is written. I believed and therefore have I spoken. What did I believe? The personal word. When that word came to me, I got a hold of it and I released it. Says we also have in the same spirit of faith. That's what makes us different. The spirit of faith. How? Because we receive Rhema. When you receive Rhema, you have the spirit of faith. Then you go around speaking words of power. That's what makes you different. The spirit of faith. Because of Rhema. Look at this. I want you to look at these three scriptures together. He says. The rhema that I speak to you, they are spirits and they are life. The words that I speak to you are spirits and they are life. Now he says, we also have in the same spirit of faith, according as it is written, I believe and therefore have I spoken. He says, we also believe and therefore speak. We also believe and therefore speak. We also believe and therefore speak. The one that you have taken a hold of, that you have made personal to you. Praise God. Then in Ephesians chapter 6 and verse 17, last night I quoted that to you. I want you to look at it again and tie it up with this other two. Ephesians chapter number 6, verse 17. He says, and take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the Spirit, which is the rhema of God. The sword of the Spirit, which is the rhema of God. The sword of the Spirit, which is the rhema of God. The sword of the Spirit, which is the rhema of God. The sword of the Spirit is not the general knowledge of the Word of God. It is that word, that personal word that God speaks to you. Sometimes you're studying the Bible. As you're studying the Bible, Rhema leaps out of that page. You just know this is mine today. You just know. You just know. You are turned on within you. You know God's talking to you right now. This is for me now. Doesn't matter that it's in the book of Ezekiel. It's for me now. Maybe Isaiah the prophet who said it, but it's for me now. This is for me now. That's rhema to you now. You just know it. You just know it. This is the sword of the Spirit, which is the rhema of God. I want to show you how this thing works. Did you ever read about the seven sons of Seva? You remember? Some call him Skiva. You remember? And those guys they went out and they, 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 they got a demon-possessed man. And then they said to him, uh, in the name of Jesus Christ, by whom Paul preaches, we command you to come out. The Bible says the demon replied. He said, Jesus, I know. Paul, I know. But who are you? Then the Bible says, the man in whom the devil was leaped on them and overcame them, prevailed against them, beat them up, tore their clothes. The Bible says they ran out naked. <laughs> All right, now let me show you something. Book of Acts, chapter number 16. Book of Acts chapter 16, 
We got to run, run, run. We got to run. From verse 16. And it came to pass as we went to prayer. A certain damsel possessed with a spirit of divination made us, which brought her masters much gain by soothsaying. Huh. We're getting to the, hey, hello. We're moving in now, all right? You know what we got to last night? All right, we're, we're, we're moving in now, okay? So you better be listening from this time forth. It came to pass, verse 16, as we went to prayer, a certain damsel possessed with the spirit of divination made us, which brought her masters much gain by soothsaying. The same followed Paul and us and cried, saying, These men are the servants of God, servants of the Most High God, which show unto us the way of salvation. And this did she many days. The Bible tells us about a little girl that was demon-possessed. She had a demon of divination. And uh, her masters used her to get money from people. And every time Paul and his companions went around preaching, as they went from street to street, and this girl followed them and was saying, These are the servants of God who show unto us the way of salvation. The Bible says she did it for many days. I want you to notice, it says he, she did it for many days. Many days. Now, verse 18 again, this did she many days, but Paul being grieved, turned and said to the spirits, I command thee in the name of Jesus Christ to come out of her. And he came out the same hour. Why didn't he do it? Proud of this time. Because this girl had been doing the same thing for several days. Why now? You know, sometimes some people say to us, yeah, if you really have power, why don't you go to Road Junction over there and cast devils out of all those folks on the street? <laughs> this fellow followed Paul for many days. Why didn't Paul do something? Because in ministering to people, and in engaging these spirit beings in a conflict like this, a lot of times you need Rhema. It's not enough to know, in my name is you cast out devils. Yeah. That's true. But the time comes when you need rhema on the inside of you. The word of God that tells you, come on, you got to do something now. Tell that devil out. You need the word on the inside. And this girl had done this thing many days until Paul was grieved. The Bible says, look at it, look at it, look at it. Verse 18, and these did she many days, but Paul being grieved. Paul was torn on the inside. He was stared within him. Why didn't he do it yesterday? He could have done it. But why didn't he do it? He knew he needed the specific words, the specific guidance. That's the reason we bounce on certain things, certain people, and things don't work. We say, whoa, 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 whoa. Relax, I'll show you something more. You ready to see this? <laughs> Let's get to Jesus. I found something very remarkable in the Bible. And um, I think that I would like to read the second one first. St. Matthew's Gospel, chapter number four. Are you there? I'm going to read pretty quick. From verse 1. Then was Jesus led up of the Spirit into the wilderness to be tempted of the devil. And when he had fasted 40 days and 40 nights, he was afterward and hungered. And when the tempter came to him, he said, If thou be the Son of God, command these stones be made bread. But he answered and said, It is written, Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeded out of the mouth of God. Verse 5. 
Then the devil take it. Now, I want you to begin to follow this. Very important now. Then the devil take it him up into the holy city and set it him on a pinnacle of the temple. Now, the first temptation was to command bread, uh, command stones to be made bread, right? What was the second one? In verse 5, it says, Then the devil taken him up into the holy city and set at him on a pinnacle of the temple and said unto him, If thou be the Son of God, cast thyself down. For it is written, He shall give his angels charge concerning thee, and in their hands they shall bear thee up, lest at any time thou dash thy foot against a stone. That's the second temptation, right? Verse 7, Jesus said unto him, It is written again, Thou shalt not tempt the Lord thy God. Verse 8. Again, the devil took him up into an exceeding high mountain and showed him all the kingdoms of the world and the glory of them and said unto him, All these things will I give thee if thou wilt fall down and worship me. Now, this is the third one, right? Then said Jesus unto him, Get thee hand, Satan. I want you to notice this now. Notice this. Then said Jesus unto him, Get thee hand, Satan. For it is written, Thou shalt worship the Lord thy God, and him only shalt thou serve. Then the devil leave at him. Why? Because Jesus said, Get out of here. Come on. Do you follow that? Jesus said to the devil, Get out of here. It's written, Thou shalt worship the Lord thy God, and him only shalt thou serve. He said, Get out. So he says, then the devil leaveth him. And the old angels came and ministered unto him. Now, I was studying in St. Luke's Gospel. I want to show you something here. St. Luke's Gospel, chapter number four. I said something very remarkable. Now, looks like the same story to me. But um, let's see. Verse, verse 1, chapter 4. And Jesus, being full of the Holy Ghost, returned from Jordan and was led by the Spirit into the wilderness. Being 40 days, now notice there's a change here. Being 40 days tempted of the devil. Throughout those 40 days, he was tempted. And in those days, he did eat nothing. And when they were ended, he afterward hungered. Now, that corroborates the same story that we had in, in the Matthew's Gospel, except that um, we are specifically told here that even during the 40 days, he was tempted. Right? All right, good. Now, look at verse 3. And the devil...